How you doing? I'm Brad Gilbert, and welcome to Sports School. We are working on attacking the net. There's two ways to really look at it. There's old school, and there's new school. A lot of the modern pros today, like Agassi, Nadal, guys like that, when they see a short ball, they're thinking about finishing the point. Let's get to most of you at home, the club players. If you're thinking about finishing the point with the attack shot, you're going to miss at least 5 out of 10. And if you're missing 5 out of 10, you're giving away way too many points. In my era, guys like Vitas Gerolaitis, John McEnroe, they would float the approach, they would slice it. And when you slice the approach, or not hit it as hard, you give yourself a little more time to get to the net. And the more time that you have to get to the net, the more time you have to cut off some angles. Obviously, if you have great skills, go ahead and go for it. But if you're like me and most club players, and you don't have the overwhelming sending western grips, and you can't bone crush it with spin, hit the ball with slice, or hit the ball safe and solid, and come in and cover down the line, and try to get to close as net as you can. And remember, you'll probably have to hit a couple of volleys, but that's old school for you. And don't forget that here on Sports School, you can use your own remote to stop, pause, rewind, and fast forward any of the training techniques that we are demonstrating. This means you are in total control. You can learn at your own pace. You've done your hard work. Now it's time to attack the net with the approach shot. I grew up in the 70s and 80s where the, the approach shot was a nice setup shot and you come in and do your work with the net. Now, me as a coach, I'm telling you, when you have a short ball, especially if you're a 5-0 player or a pro player, you rip it and you come in. But for club players who not have exceptional racket head speed and can't get that amazing spin, once again, maybe you don't want to go for so much. You don't want to get that big eyes. You want to hit safe and solid. Give yourself four feet of margin of error and get to net. Because remember, a lot of club players do not pass like professionals. So if you're a club player, give yourself that nice margin of error and don't take the shot for granted. And remember, move your feet on it. All right, Yaz, give me a couple. Oh, I hit over a backhand. I didn't used to be able to do that. See, I'm more old school where I would tend to slice the backhand approach, but all the modern players are saying, what the heck is that? All right, give me a forehand. See, I put a little more pace on that because that's the shot, my bigger shot. See, when you have a big forehand, you want to go for that forehand. But once again, give yourself how, see how I hit that shot? I gave myself a nice four foot margin of error. I didn't exactly try to hit a winner. The pros will probably try to hit a winner on that, but club players stay solid, stay comfortable, and try to make that shot nine out of 10 times. You're gonna win a heck of a lot of points. Now you've hit the solid approach, there's still more work to be done. As you hit the approach, I call this area here the home base, where you do your split step. You want to kind of move forward and do that little split step as you watch your opponent, that's when you keep moving forward. What you want to avoid doing, a lot of us do at the club player level, we hit that approach and we literally are running out of control forgetting about the split step, and when you hit the volley, you have no balance, and you're just out of control. You have no base, nothing. I heard this when I first turned pro when I was 20 years old. All Australians have covered down the line on their passport. That's why you never see an Aussie get passed down the line. They always hug down the line, because they always feel like it's easier to stick your racket out and guard cross court. So remember, when you hit the hit me approach, and then I'm gonna show you split step. And then I wanna, move forward on the split step. You do that little hop, split step. The reason why you want to do that little hop, split, it's for your balance and kind of figure out, gauge what your opponent's going to do. If you literally sprint in out of control, he can either lob you or pass you. You've given up your advantage. So remember, after you hit the good approach, your balance is so key and cover down the line. Let's see if we can do one good one here. See, he gave me one hanging, so that was pretty easy. But remember, the little split step, think about covering down the line first and then moving forward. That's the key to a good split step.
For you club players out there, most of us cannot put away the first volley like the pros. So there's still more work to be done. So after you've done your split step and you hit your volley, you don't want to stay here. You want to try to move forward so you catch the next one closer to the net so you have a chance to put away the ball. Remember the key too is keeping good technique, not getting too excited, keeping your balance, try to stay as low as possible. Let me hit a couple here where after the split step, I try to move forward. And then you back up, here you go. Okay, so you see how on both of those, I cut them early and cut them off. Now the same shot, this is what most of us do to get it in trouble. We've done the split step and we don't move on the second one and look where we are to hit that volley. Brutal position, we'll miss nine out of 10. So remember, after the split set, don't stay at home base because you have no angle. You're easily past cross court or easily past down the line. So as soon as you hit that split step, move forward and finish it. Much easier to finish the volley moving forward. <laughs> 